Hey guys, today I'm here to take a look at the 1990s Bandai Tick Toy line. And this is based on a, a comic book series which was later adapted into a cartoon series and even a live action show. Um, my first exposure was through the cartoon, absolutely loved it. It's, it's kind of a forgotten property now, which is a shame because it is really good kind of spoof parody of the superhero genre. Anyway, we'll start off with the Tick himself. Now, this isn't, you know, a modern day collector's standard of figure. This is very much a kind of late 80s, early 90s quality action figure. But the sculpt on the face is actually pretty good, I think, because with it being such a kind of animated look, I think it's, it was easier for them to translate that to plastic. His, his articulation is pretty minimal. His arms move up and down. Waist articulation from side to side, and the head moves. And now the reason he doesn't have any uh, leg articulation much is because of his action feature, which you would see in a lot of wrestler figures of the time, where he has this lever on the back you push down, it pushes his torso down, which just looks bizarre, and it would just kind of fall down. Oh, he actually worked then. I think it's the first time I've ever had this action feature work properly, how it's supposed to. Like, I had, I had some wrestling figures that were like this as well, and the action feature was just crap. It, like, it ruined the sculpt of the figure, and it didn't work. They just fall down. But in a way, like, dodgy action features sort of suits this toy line, because the tick was this blundering, silly parody of superheroes, and I almost feel like the toy line is a parody of superhero toy lines with the action features. Now, whether I'm just looking too much into this and it's just a cheap figure or not, I don't know. Now, one problem with him is that often, with his arms by his side like that, he won't balance. Luckily, this table's on a slight slope, so he will. But, see, there, he, he tends to fall back. He's not now, I'm doing it on camera, which is a typical thing. But it, often you would have to have his arms sticking out in front of him to get him to balance. Now, also with this figure, if you can see, his body is a slight green because the plastic, for some reason on the torso of this particular figure, if it's exposed to the sun too long, will go a greenish colour. And it's not just this one. It seems like all the, the, the figures of the tick himself had that problem. But otherwise, for the time, I actually think this is a really nice figure of the tick. Um, there, there was a, an updated version made a few years ago, I can't remember the company's name now, which had all the, the modern day articulation of a Marvel Legends figure, but the face sculpt wasn't as good, and the, the company themselves were just kind of con artists really. I, I ordered a figure from them, never, never arrived, emailed them for my money back, never got a reply, never got the money back, and lots of people had that problem. So, unfortunately, these are kind of the best tick figures that, that are available to us at the minute. Now this is this, the Arthur, the Tick's sidekick, who kind of found this wingsuit one day and decided to put it on and become a superhero. Once again, the face sculpt is actually really quite good, but the body sculpt is just in this bizarre pose, like crouching down with his arms poking out to the side as if he's about to just go raving or something. I don't know what the hell he's supposed to be doing in that pose. He's got better leg articulation than the tick. I mean, his legs actually do move up and down in the, the arm and head articulation. And his action feature is that if you push this lever on the back, his wings flap. Which makes sense. So it's, it's, it's a good figure, all but this kind of bizarre crouch in pose he's doing. And, and some of the other figures have that problem as well. Now, probably the third most well-known and popular character in this show, who wasn't ever in the the, car, uh, the comics, is Deflator Mouse, who um, was kind of translated to the live-action show as well, but in, in that he was called Batman Well, because there was some kind of copyright problem with using the name Deflator Mouse, but basically the same character. He's this uh, Batman wannabe, he's, he's got no superpowers or no inclination to even try and stop crime, he's kind of a coward, but he just wants to look good for the girls and, and chat women up basically dressed as Batman and his uh, action feature is there's a lever on his back that you pull down and he gives I'm Batman. It basically just poses which suits his character down to the ground 
Now, my one problem with this figure is he, in the show, he was really buff. I mean, it was all for show, but he was a, a really buff character. Um, but the, the toy is, is just kind of a bit flattened and skinny looking. Nice cape as well. It's probably the better than any cape I ever got with a Batman figure. It's really like, it's a nice size cape. It doesn't seem to sort of bend round at the bottom like the Batman ones did for some reason. It's just ironic that this figure gets a better cape than any of the Batman figures of the 90s. Then we come to Sewer Urchin, who was kind of this Rain Man type character, you know, it sort of came across as a bit simple. But uh, it turned out in one episode he actually had his own supervillain, his own arch enemy, and was up to his own adventures that no one ever <laughs> knew about or, or would, uh, would expect of him. Now he's got the same articulation as most of the others, you know, just arms, legs, no, five points of articulation basically. And he has the same crouching as if he's about to do a poo pose as Arthur. Now this guy's action feature is that on his back he has this tank that is just soft plastic that you would fill with water, put on his back and press it and it would squirt water out of those two holes either side of his head. Kind of a standard action feature, you know, water squirting things have always been popular with kids. This, this one has kind of trouble standing up sometimes because of the pose he's in. Can be a bit awkward getting him to stand on his own. And after that we've got American Maid. Now, her original design didn't have this top part of the dress. In the first episode she was in, it was just kind of a slightly low-cut top, but apparently uh, the censors didn't like that. So the next time she appeared, she had this all-over bodysuit covering her breasts. Which is a bit sad, really, that they feel they have to do that. Now, her actually, she's got no leg articulation whatsoever, just a bit in the waist, and that's linked to her action feature, as you can see there, which is that... She does kind of a karate chop slash elbowing someone behind her in the guts. This arm moves and the head moves. And once again, it is a pretty good likeness in the face. It's as cheap as these figures might seem. They really got the cartoony face sculpts down. Now after her comes Crusading Chameleon. No, I, I like this character, but he was hardly ever used, and that's because um, the guy who did the voice of Crusading Chameleon in the second series onwards did the voice of Arthur, because the guy who did the, the voice of Arthur in the first season left for some reason, and their voices would have sounded too similar, so Crusading Chameleon basically got cut out of the show, which I thought was a real shame. Now his power is that he uh, would change colour to blend into the background, and the, the, the action feature, which is kind of cool, um, is that his hands and his eyeballs would change colour with temperature, but it, it doesn't really work anymore. It would be that um, if you warmed it up a bit by having your hands on it like this, it would turn brown, but over time, unfortunately, that, that it just doesn't work anymore. Now, he, he actually has better articulation as well, as well as the five points in his neck, his arms, and his legs. He's also got boot cuts and wrist cuts. And he is in a bit of a crouching pose as well, like uh, Arthur and Sewer Urchin, but it, it's not as bad as them, it kind of suits him more because of the kind of character he, well, he is. Got a, a pl nice plastic cape rather than a, than a fabric one, and a little tail. And I, 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 I've, I, for some reason the design of him just always caught me, and like I say in the cartoon, I got, I was a fan of his. And lastly for the heroes is the Human Bullet. And this is the first tick figure I ever got. I was so excited to find it. Little did I know, I would never find another one again in shops until about 10 years later when eBay came along. And I was kind of disappointed that this was the only figure they had in left because he, he wasn't the most exciting of the heroes. He wasn't really used all that much. But his gimmick, with he, he would fire himself out of a cannon that he had in his back garden and just kind of land wherever he landed. <laughs> he wasn't much help to anyone. And I still have the card back from this guy as well, where you can see all the other figures in the first wave of the line. And it says here, caution, be safe, never aim at people or animals, because there's a button on his back here which would fire the top of his head out. And it fires a reasonable way, but it's not, you know, I wouldn't be too worried about having that aimed at me if someone fired it. I don't think it's gonna do much damage. <laughs> He's got the five, actually only four points of articulation. His head doesn't move because it's got to accommodate 
the missile going in there for the action feature. Now the only other uh, good guy I don't have is the man-eating cow, which uh, I never saw. I, I don't know if he was ever in the cartoon. I, I have no knowledge of what the man-eating cow is, and that's why I never really bothered to get him. But as well as the man-eating cow, you can also see there's the evil doers, which I'll get onto in a bit. The front design of the box, just with a tick in his face. Now for the second wave of figures, the box design changed. They kind of cut it down a bit from being that size. to this smaller size here. Still with the tick's face on it, but as you can see, it's just a smaller box. On the back here, we've got the second wave figures. Now, I'll move on to some of the bad guys now. I don't have as many of the bad guys as good guys, but I have Thrakazog, who was an alien that moved in next door to the tick, in the, in the apartment next door to the tick. And he wanted to clone the Tick to create an army of super villains to take over the world. And the only articulation he has is in his arms going up and down, which moves the tongue from side to side. But being just a kind of blob creature, there isn't really any other articulation you can give him. So I'm not too fussed about the, the problem with articulation with him. And uh, once again, a really nice, he's maybe the best sculptor of the line. And uh, possibly because they didn't have to put articulation in him, they've just made a really good, cartoon accurate model of the character. Now, the next villain, and this is another one that's a really good sculpt and quite good articulation. As you can see, he's got articulation in the knees. Now, this is Dinosaur Neil. And uh, his, in the show, he would start off as a normal guy and he would grow into a kind of Godzilla-like creature. He's a bit like um, Dr. Connors slash the Lizard in Spider-Man, but um, he grew up to Godzilla size. And his gimmick is that he can grow, as you can see, which is quite a cool action feature. Now he's got articulation in his arms, going up and down. Head will go from side to side. They're a bit stiff, and I don't, I, because they've been in the garage for a while, and I don't want to force the articulation. But the head does have a joint, and he's got knee articulation, and uh, I think the tail will swivel as well. Once again, that feels quite s stiff, and I don't want to risk breaking them. Now we have uh, Death Hug Dean. Now he's got the five points of articulation, but with the head swivel, it's more you know just, just like the screw going round. And his action feature is there's a button on the back here, which makes him do his death hug slash bear hug. Now I always thought for this figure it would have made more sense if the bear hug feature was activated by this screw on his head if you would like turning that screw would gradually make the arms close and then open because in the cartoon when he uh, clamps down on, on the tick's head with his hand the tick gets out of it by unscrewing his head and, and loosening the grip from the hand. So it's kind of a missed opportunity there. I don't know if it's just because it would have cost too much in the tooling or it was too difficult to orchestrate that mechanism inside the body. But instead we just get the typical lever making him do that death grip. And the last villain I have is a character who he only appeared in the cartoon once and that was standing in the background and that is Dynamole. I don't know if he was in the comics more. I can't recall ever reading him in the comics either. So it's odd that he got an action figure. Now he's basically a suicide bomber. There's a button on the back there, his belt buckle, you press and it's where he blows himself up. <laughs> it's kind of funny, this is just the sort of humour that the Tick had, like this is the kind of villain that the Tick would go up against. He uh, has articulation in his legs but it's just like that, as if he's about to give birth or something. And his legs go up and down, uh, his arms sorry, go up and down. No head articulation. Now, as well as uh, those figures, the only villains I don't have are Mucus Tick. You can see in the Greek green character there, he was a, a clone of the Tick that Thrakazog created. There's Skippy, the propellerized robot dog, which apparently is quite a rare one to get hold of, and El Seed. And I always wished they'd have done a figure of um, uh, Mr. Mental and the Terror, because those were my two favourite villains, and they were the most 
kind of typical comic booky kind of supervillains. The closest we got to a terror toy is this one here from the Bendables line. I don't know if they still make figures like this, but I hated these kind of figures. They didn't have any articulation. They were just rubber with wire inside that you could kind of bend to get into poses, and they're just horrible. I remember getting a, a, a set of Star Wars ones, and I, oh, just a terrible sculpt on them, but this is the close I could get to getting a figure of the Terror, so I, I got him to make do. He's, he's out of scale with the other figures. As you can see, even next to one of the shorter ones, he just, he just looks way too small. I know he's supposed to be a little old man, but he's a bit too little. But it's the only example of a bendables figure I have. Now, even though they're made by a different company, they're made by a company called Gordy Toy, whatever that is, um, they have the same kind of car, uh, card back as the Tick uh, Bandai figures, where it's that kind of orange and spotted background with a picture of the Tick on it. So there's a bit of uniformity between the two toy lines, at least. For the Bendables figures, they just did the Tick, Arthur, um, American Maid, El Seed, and the Terror. But like I say, I, I can't stand those figures anyway. But um, yeah, in general, this is just because I love the Tick, I, I do like this toy line. They're not the best toys ever made by any stretch, but they do, in a way, capture the spirit of the Tick in being kind of goofy. And it's a shame it's such an underrated property in general. I don't know why it's not more popular to have a comeback. But, oh well. They did do quite a few of these figures. I think they, I'm not sure if they planned a playset or if they actually did a playset in the end of the Tick's apartment. I think it was only planned. I don't think they ever actually made it, which is a shame, because I would have loved to have had a playset, which is basically just an apartment that the Tick lives in. I'm sorry for the, the quality of this video, but my camera is really having problems lately. I really don't know what to do. It's an expensive camera. I've got an you know, expensive memory card, but it's just taking crap videos at the minute. So I'm going to have to invest in a proper video camera, a digital video camera, and scrap using the old uh, Canon. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and till next time.